Hello, sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. We did have a slight PC issue there. We are trying to see if we can just sort it now, but we seem to be back. Tiger, you with us? I am indeed, and we were just looking at. The, we only we haven't missed anything in particular, as we were in the middle of the three-minute delay. We just saw the completed team comps there, and didn't really get a chance to talk about it too much. No, we didn't really get a chance to talk about it there. But on the blue side, ladies and gentlemen, it is Infinity Gaming going to be going for the blue side. And they are going to be taking Seven Chamber with Malphite in the top lane. I am Sultan with Zack in the jungle. Wizard with Z uh, Zed in the mid lane. Corky and Karma for Sika and Go Karma in the duo lane. And on the purple or red side, whichever you guys prefer, it is going to be Shed Life with Tricked Guy taking Trundle into the top lane. Default with Elise in the jungle. The Dune taking the ever so safe uh, Lulu into the mid lane. And then it's going to be the Callista and Alistair for Burns the Irish and. I, hi, I'm Kenny times three. I, it's very, very obvious here what Shed Life are trying to do with this comp. They are trying to just keep Kenny safe and make sure that he just does not get touched to the entire fight. Yeah, and I think realistically it's not that difficult to do. However, the Malphite was the right pick to try upset this. Zack is just kind of a follow-up on that because Zack, we've seen in previous games does have a big issue when things are able to kite him effectively. It involves a lot of predictions from Zack to actually land the elastic slingshot. So he's much better kind of elastic slingshotting behind the carry, trying to ult him into the team. But we've seen that's proven difficult in previous games. We'll see if Sultan's better at pulling it off. Yeah, we'll see what Sultan can do. We have seen a pretty good, decent Zack game in the, uh, Division 2, I do believe. And we have seen a not-so-decent one there uh, get with Cerberus in Division 1. But I feel like the early game is definitely kind of riding on default as well for the side of uh, Shed Life. He needs to be aggressive, he needs to be getting this Trundle uh, in the top lane going and pushing back this Malphite. We may actually even see a lane swap because I'm not exactly sure how strong the Kalissa Alistair combo is early against the Corky Morgana. One Dark Binding, there's a lot of burst damage that's able to go down. Yeah, and you of course have the Thunderlords with Morgana pretty much guaranteed at that point because you have the W under it. And of course, Corky's Thunderlords is easily procced as well, plus the Phosphor Foam does a lot of damage early. So, as you said, a lot of quick burst, especially around the level levels 1 to 3 mark, and of course at level 6 again. But see how they do decide to do it. I don't imagine a lane swap is necessary for either team. It's just to be aware of the kind of combos that are available to Sheikah and Good Karma here. Yeah, they really want to see what way they want to work for it. And a lot of this is like, you can just have a look at the side of Infinity Gaming. The team fight is 90% of what they're looking for here. The, yes, they have got the split push technically with, uh, with Wizard Z, And, you know, Corky is always going to be able to keep people at a distance. It's going to be more so they're looking for dragon fights, they're going to be looking for Baron plays, and they're going to be looking for those tight corners just so that their AoE damage of the Zack and the mouth fight can just do so, so much. Yeah, and I think what Infinity are looking for here is kind of a repeat of the Dunes. Kind of less than stellar performance in the last game. They want to get that Zed fed early. He's taken the Ignite in lane as well, just for that extra kill pressure. So he really wants to start getting ahead, and then he could shut down the Callista, and then the whole comp starts to fall apart. Yeah, we are going to go quickly into an intro for technical difficulties. The uh, stream computer isn't quite loading in, so we'll be back to you guys very, very shortly, hopefully with the game.
gentlemen. We are into game there. Tigs, apologies for giving me there as the Doom gets ganked into the mid lane. I'm sold and the Cocoon misses by default. That is going to be a bit more harassed there from the Zed going on top of that Lulu. It's going to be very difficult here, but we are three and a half minutes into game. Yeah, and I think there was very little actually missed in that time. It was mostly just farming up. And a nice level two hit from the Dune early meant that he's pulled... Actually ended up in a CS deficit, even though he was the one pushing in. So should have netted himself a positive here. So needs to focus a little more on CSing now. And some good pressure there to keep default off his own buff. And that's going to be the Dune. Ooh, there's the Ignite going down there as well. The Dune, one more auto attack, should be able to do it. No, he leveled up! He leveled up off of a minion from the Whimsy kill. Nicely done. I don't think it was intentional, but nonetheless, it keeps him alive and doesn't give away first blood. And that was so unfortunate for the Zed there. He could have stayed on that as well. He didn't need to back as quickly as he did, but he saw that one tower shot hit him. He was too scared to keep going for it. Yeah, he really, really was. And the bot lane definitely working in favor, or sorry, the bot lane, the mid lane definitely working in favor of the side of Infinity Gaming. As you see now, Burns the Irish trying to go aggressive. They do miss the Dark Binding though, and that's going to be a lot of damage going on to either support. Good Karma taking the rend, but it shouldn't be too bad. Um, for the side of Infinity Game, and they should be able to get the most of these on the turret. Yep, you can see the the really nice thing about Alistair's support right now is the fact that he's a engage heavy, disengage heavy, and sustain sustain support since Wind Speakers works so well with his E. So that's what makes him so difficult to deal with in lane because you saw that trade went about evenly, but Burnsy Irish is already back in full health. Yeah, he's pretty solid there. I am Sultan lurking there to the back. But he should be just fine. We actually do see default into the top side. So they might look for a gank onto 7 Chamber. He is a relatively immobile uh, top laner. I'm Kenny taking a bit of harass there, but nothing too crazy. Should be able to just hop and skip away pretty damn safely. But the mid lane was warded. Nothing else going to be happening there. Yeah, and I can't imagine too much will happen in the top lane until level 6 is hit by Tricked. Then he can try force something, but until then you're seeing very little damage go down either side. Just because Graf the Undying heals pretty much all the damage these guys actually have at this point of the game. Yeah, exactly. And see what kind of work they can really do. And as I said, it was kind of all on default to really make these early ganks work. Because at the moment they actually have a bit of a CS uh, lead. And that's turning it into a gold lead for the side of Shed Life. It's only about four or 500. But again, it's definitely more pressure in their favor. They have pretty much CS leads in every single lane. Top, jungle, mid, and in that bot lane as well. So definitely a scaling comp coming out here from the side of Infinity Gaming. Yes, yeah, so they just need enough farm that they can continue to scale up. So as long as they're not getting kills and as long as Zack isn't effectively shutting them down, they're actually okay. What they do have to be aware of, though, is the level 6 power spikes of pretty much every lane. Yeah, there's a lot of power spikes there from that side of Infinity Gaming. Let's bounce as well when that hit comes online. As we talk about Nelsika getting caught out a little bit, the flat, uh, the pulverize and the head wolf coming in. They are still continuing to go. And good karma though gets caught out a little bit. They're actually going to turn this back in. He forces the flash from there from Kenny, and they're going to try and turn onto Burnsy. There's the flash in the dark binding. Good karma picks up first blood, and that is a great start off a really bad mistake there from the side of Shed Life. Good start there though for Infinity Gaming. Yeah, and you see the the bigger issue. Not only the tower shot was the issue, but the fact that. For the most of that trade, he was autoing good karma, and then only later on, when Burnsy really kind of focused it down, was he able to turn towards the AD carry, but that's going to be the engage. That is going to be the engage. Default, though, jumps onto good karma. That was a good move there by Burnsy Irish, and picks himself up a return kill there. But again, it's not really the target they want to be going for. The fact that uh, Zika is going to be able to stay in this lane and farm up means there's going to be a little bit more of a CS differential now between those AD carries. Yeah, we're seeing some very late Dark Bindings coming in at the moment, so needs to really kind of tighten that play up in the Morgana if she's actually going to stop Burns the Irish, continue to engage and disengage. Yeah, we see now Sika, oh, needs to be careful, gets pulverized and knocked up as well by the head buff. Oh dear, why would you stay that long? Kenny picks himself up another kill, and a bad overstay on the side of Infinity Gaming means they give up a free kill that they could have kept as an advantage, but now means nothing. Yeah, so it's actually 2-1 in favor of Shed Life from what was a nice early play that turned against them. So, just a confusing overstay from Infinity. They thought Burns the Irish was backed, but at the same time, you don't need to stay that long. You had no mana, you're an AD carry, you are squishy, and it cost him his life in the end. Yeah, it cost him life and gave over a nice little chunk of gold to that pocket of Kenny. 
So we see now Blue Buff being transferred over to Wizard. Doesn't really need it, but the cooldown reduction does help. And I suppose having a, uh, a non-mana jungler as well means he can be a little bit selfish with that. Package being picked up there by Sika is level 6, so they might look for a little bit of a play. Good vision control, actually, at the moment on that bot side river on the side of Infinity Gaming. No wards at all at the moment for the side of uh, Shed Life, as we might see an engage the Dune, forced to flash away. Good slingshot there, and I Am Sultan picks himself up a summoner. Yeah, that's some odd positioning because the Dune walked towards that, which ended up putting him in the position where he had to flash. So just needs to pay more attention to what the potential positioning of other people was because I think he saw the Malphite and panicked, but at the same time, there was no reason to follow Azak into his own jungle. Yeah, we see now Wizard trying to get a little bit more damage down as they see Chica just going and come in as well. Maybe get a bit more. They might go for the engage here though. Slingshot just about misses and that's going to be the engage stop though as it say that. Now there goes a good Dark Binding. Or sorry, Spell Shield at the Dark Binding. And they are just trying to keep the jungler of default alive. They use the uh, all the ultimates there as well. They're trying to just chunk him down. There's another kill going over. Sika picks up that one. One more would have done it. Dark Binding goes wayward. Trick Guy did TP down though. And they may continue to go for this fight but he has no support with him. He's forced to flash away. As I say that though, Malphite comes in with the unstoppable force and they pick up some more kills for the team. And that is going to be a huge gold swing back in the favor of Infinity. Nice team play. Yeah, it was nice team play there from them as well to roam down in time. But the big thing for me there was a really late TP by Trundle really cost that fight because he could have helped earlier when his team was still alive. But he went in so late that he ended up just giving himself as a free kill. And then as his team attempted to disengage from him, they died in the aftermath. Yeah, and Seven Chamber didn't even have to burn his TP. Devontator can now use his TP to go back up into that top side and collect that massive wave of farm. We see the dragon going down. The TP that was used by the Dune as they look to maybe engage in this. The dragon did go down. Good Karma trying to get away. Nice Dark Binding trying to see if he can get away. Cocoon does land though, and Good Karma will be the sacrificial lang. Possibly along with I Am Sultan. Does have his slingshot, but it doesn't matter as the silence from the Dune is going to spell that death warrant as they continue to go on and it's just becoming a little bit small mistakes that you could just fix a little bit like Seven Chamber didn't have to TP immediately back to that top lane. He could have stayed to just secure that dragon, get everybody out safe and now they're going to lose a turret for it as well as a couple of kills. They could simply have backed and gone for the dragon afterwards with the quick gold lead they'd accrued but the bigger issue there is just like what we've seen every time is Infinity Game being pull a lead and then immediately shed life respond on respawn. That's first of all not really a sustainable strategy for shed life, but at the same time is not really what Infinity Gaming want when they're against a scaling comp. Yeah, no, not really. And Infinity need to start doing that. They have no more TP advantage, as I said. Seven Chamber did have it, and then lost it very quickly as he went to go and get a little bit selfish for that top lane farm. And wards galore now at the moment for the side of shed life as they look to try and keep going off of this kind of more reactive play they seem to be going for. They're not making the moves, but they're capitalizing on top of the bad moves. As we see now, Fate's Call comes in. Good Karma does not pop down the shields quick enough, and he's going to be jumped on. But here comes Wizard, trying to jump in as quick as he possibly can. They're trying to just jump on him. There's a good uh, uh, ult from the Karma, and he gets in. Oh, one last auto attack, but it doesn't matter. Wizard picks himself up a return kill. As we see now, Seven Chain and Crick got a tricked guy trying to go on top of this one. The subject gate was used. They may look to re-engage this, though, as... I am Sultan is around. They yeah, may just wait for that substitute to go down, but they might be a little bit dangerous so into this top side. And while this is all happening, the Dune is just free farming into this top side, this mid lane, and pushing it in. Here we go. Trick Guy gets jumped on there. They're going to use the less bounce, and they're going to combo that in as well. They don't really have the damage, though, to continue it on. Just one more would have done it, though. They don't quite get the damage down in time. Two tanks just really aren't going to be enough there, and the Dune comes in. Just going to clear some wards. After he free farms mid lane, but this game is chaotic to say the least. Yeah, and I think the Dune could have stayed in that mid lane and could have put up a lot more damage down in that tower, but the hottest team we're about to get engaged on didn't realize that there was pretty much no one there from Infinity Gaming to spawn. That's going to be I Am Sultan looking for an engage. Could have cost him a bit there, but again, these guys don't have much damage in them. Yeah, no, not really. If you look past the. Even the mid laners and the, the AD carries, no one on this team, apart from Trick Guy and Trundle, who won't be scaling up for a very long time, will have any damage or any significant damage anytime soon. 
And that's just going to be a weird kind of, you know, trade-off of how long these fights are going to go on. And it just, it just suits Kenny as well, because the more spears that Kenny can get into the opponent, the higher the rend damage will be. And it could be a really big problem for the side of Infinity Gaming if these fights go on for an extended period of time and Kenny's left alive. Yeah, and I think that the big thing as well is the fact that Shed Life do have kind of secondary damage sources in the Trundle and the Elise. Like, alone, they're not excellent, obviously. The Elise is a nice kind of... Assassin style jungler in the sense that if she manages to catch an AD carry out, she can burst them down with that runic echoes, but isn't really necessarily what she's looking for, especially as they start scaling up. In the meantime, you do have a little bit of damage because that trundle is building towards the titanic hydra, so kind of looking for if their AD carry doesn't goes down, they might be able to finish off a fight. Yeah, Wizard trying to see if he can get some more damage going down as well. Definitely turning into more of a uh, mid-game spike there from the Lulu. Definitely going to be more difficult. Nearly hitting level 11, so that wild growth going to be even harder to deal with on the side of Infinity Gaming. And one turret each, one dragon in favor of um, Zo or, sorry, in Shed Life, and the gold lead is pretty much minimal right now. Yeah, and I think what I'd like to see more from default is more ganks in this bot lane, and they're actually going to do it now. Yeah, they are going to go for it here now. It's good karma. Gets a little bit caught out. Tries to pop the ultimate there. Doesn't quite get it, but Callista is down. And it's going to be a 2v3 right now as everyone comes in. Trick Guy's going to make a 5v2 or 4v2 as Wizard just gets chunked out. The Whimsy and, or the whimsy and the knockup or the cocoon does take him out in the end. And while all that was happening, Seven Chamber didn't have TP up and stayed up in that top lane. So they're going to have to try and trade turrets off this. But I don't think Malphite's the, the fastest of turret pushers. Yeah, and the wizard made a really awkward call there to continue and engage that had clearly failed already. They got the Callista down, and at that point they needed to try run away, but the wizard started walking forward instead and guaranteed his own death, and his team didn't disengage either, so really turned against them, and the Dune's actually going to go up to protect that tower with his TP. Yeah, and that is the advantage of having the double TP on your team. You can look for the engage in the bot lane and then just continue on with the TP from the mid laner to secure to keep that tower in the top lane safe. And that's just going to be more gold going on. But the funny thing is, like, this game is so chaotic and it's so sporadic. And well, for lack of a better term, there's just so many mistakes coming out from both sides. It's kind of more of who can make the least of uh, you know the, kind of the smallest mistake and who can capitalize on the other opponent's mistake the hardest. Yeah, and I think the capitalizing is what we've seen more of thus far. And I'm looking forward to more proactive plays from both sides, because what we've seen is the reactive plays have been much more successful, simply because the plays that the teams have started making have been just a little bit awkward. But to be fair, it was Infinity there that started that play in the bot lane, and they did get a good few kills off it, and a, bit of, and a tower advantage. Yeah, the Dragon, though, might be the next big fight, though. They have got Teleport now available on 7 Chamber. So this, actually, I don't know why the Wizard is in this top lane while this Dragon is here. Doesn't really need to be here. The Dune has no TP as well, so he needs to get himself down, because he is a huge component of this Protect the Callista. As we see now, Good Karma might be a little bit... Oh, the Flash Pulverize doesn't quite work out. Good Karma forced to Flash as well, but the Black Shield able to keep her alive. You see now Dragon has been proc. They are starting to roam down this now. Burns the Irish getting a lot of damage on top of them though. The Dragon acting as a 2v1 with Sika. Now it could possibly just be the disengage there because they didn't quite get the combo off. And that's going to be the Dragon going over in favor of Infinity Gaming. Yeah, and they actually could have sped it up a bit if they decided to use the package which is now gone just to for quick dragon damage, but they decide against it just to keep them that little bit of safety as the dragon's going down, as they don't have wards from where Alistair originally flashed from. So, they do decide to hold on to it, and they do get the dragon. Yeah, this is a bit of a weird push here at the moment. Everyone on the side of uh, Infinity Gaming roamed up to that top side, when realistically they had a turret down the bot that's going to be taken now as well, so that turret trade is going to be even over the scoreboard. Only still one in, the, in favor of shed life and that was a little bit of a weird one i feel like tricked guy could have went down and protected that uh, turret relatively easily yeah but it looks like shed life are actually gonna prioritize the rift herald and give it to high M kenny as well so i think they're looking to group up as five early and is if not i'm wondering why they bothered sending so many people up to take that rift herald 
Yeah, they need to make some kind of push, and this is the thing, normally when you see the Rift Herald being taken, it's normally a Rift Herald straight into a top lane push and try to get that second tier turret, or that uh, uh, tier 2 turret, because it's so, so strong against someone like Malphi, who doesn't have great wave clear, who, you know, has to kind of slowly beat down the waves, and... I don't think that really that buff's really gonna do them all that much because they're just not gonna be able to utilize it. There's no outer towers left. Yeah, but in the meantime, they are gonna look for some small engages in the jungle. Yeah, they are gonna see I am salted, and he's gonna get locked up. The chain CC. He's gonna go into passive mode, but that is just gonna be delaying the inevitable. And that was just a huge amount of chain CC going there on the side of uh, Shed Life. As you see now, good karma getting caught out as well. They may look for a re-engage. Spooky Ghost goes out. Dark Binding misses, but they don't see anything else from it, and this is just a strange sequence of events, and it's going to be a mid lane push coming out here from the side of Shed Life. And it's these late black shields that are really costing good karma in these engages. If she had used the black shield there, Corky wouldn't have had to blow heal on the disengage, and of course they wouldn't have had to disengage in the first place, but it's... You had one well-timed one there when you saw the flash pulverize earlier, needs to get back to that kind of form and needs to make it consistent. Yeah, we see a 30 CS lead now for the Dune as well, so let's see what they want to try to go for in this mid lane. There isn't. The actual as a Seeker gets caught out, has to use the Black Shield in, but they use it with a Seven Chamber, chamber goes in with a great unstoppable force, and they may just be in a little bit of trouble. Seven Chamber is the first one to go down, but here goes Wizard on the backside. He tries to use the Death Mark onto his Callista, but Kenny is still alive, rending. Uses the Fates Call to get uh, a Burnsy out of there. They're flashing. Ooh, Flash and the Shadow not able to get it. The Dune, though, might be in a little bit of trouble. Great Cocoon from default stops I Am Sultan in his tracks. Good Karma is a little bit too far forward, backs away. And that was a nice disengage there from the side of Shed Life. They keep everybody alive and they pick up two kills. And that was actually what I was talking about in Champ Select about 7th Chamber engaging. Even though the Malphite ultimate landed, as soon as that subjugate went down, you could see him trying to run away but instantly burst down by that Callista, by the Lulu and by the Elise. So, while he is of course building straight tank, that subjugate really kind of makes him look particularly squishy. Yeah, um, this is going to be an interesting mid-game as we come up to it. 20 minutes, not quite the mid-game yet, but we are slowly getting towards it. And I'm curious to see how long it's going to take for, or how long they, uh, the side of uh, Shed Life can keep uh, Kenny alive in this game. Because at the moment, they are doing a fantastic job. Burnsy able to, you know, uh, pulverize and headbutt everyone away. But this might be a Baron call. 20 minutes off the respawn. But I feel like this is a really, really risky call. They need to stop. This has been warded. And they back away from it. That was a little bit risky to say the least. I mean, there is a red pink ward in the back of the pit. That's entirely visible. They knew they were being watched as they did. They'd seen the Elise bot lane. So they thought maybe they could go for it. But... I think they were hoping the Corky did more damage, as they really did not do much damage to that at all. Yeah, no, the Pink Ward did only go down, though, uh, as Tricked Guy had his uh, Baron senses tingling. And this bot lane's going to take a hell of a beating now in the bot, uh, from the side of Shed Life as they look to try and push that odd misplay from the side of Infinity Gaming. And this game really, honestly, could go either way. It's a 3,000, just under 3,000 gold lead now in favor of Shed Life. And one bad engage, which honestly we've seen quite a few, you know, from both sides, could spell a, a huge push for I think, but Trick Guy still pushing in this top lane, there's just so much pressure from the side of Shed Life, Infinity Gaming don't know what to do. Yeah, and I was going to say, if the engages are starting to go a bit wayward, Shed Life have the advantage, because all they have to do is send that Trundle to go split push, then they can set up what they have currently as a 1-1-3, but they're probably better off with the 104 in the current state of the game, because Lulu, of course, is just so good with the team, and realistically, if Zed pushes up that far, they can just engage in the bot lane, but I'm just wondering what Infinity are doing to try shut this down, because right now, all they've done is send the Malphite up to protect the Inhib tower, they've sent the Zed into the mid lane, and they haven't really looked for any proactive engages. What they should be doing is looking for the Malphite to either engage by himself or possibly look for a TP engage. Yeah, Seven Chamber needs to be the initiator. They need to try and find some kind of back way into a fight that forces Trick Guy to TP in as well. And they do have the advantage, in my opinion, in a 5v5. If you can land a 3-4 three to or three, four man... Uh, oh, as we go now, the Dune gets jumped on there by I Am Sultan. Takes a chunk of damage. 
And it's going to be another dragon uh, contest coming out from both sides. And honestly, these guys are putting on a lot of emphasis on these dragons. And apart from the first one, the rest of them aren't that big of a deal. Yeah, but I think it's the opportunity for Infinity to actually team fight. So it is a really good idea for them to start grouping around it. On the side of Shed Life, though, they really don't need to overcommit to this. They can kind of hang back. They're the ones who are already sitting the dragons, and they have Trick Guy in the top lane pushing. And now they've only sent one back to stop him, so they can start this dragon dance. Yeah, they can start this. They had to send Dark uh, Seven Chamber. That's going to be the package lost there. Burnsy Irish taking a bit of a chunk there, but Seven Chamber is the only one who could realistically come back. The dragon has been started. This is not a 50 50 though with a Callista, and they're going to have to give this one up as I say that now. Burnsy Irish jumps onto top of Sika, forces him to use the Valkyrie. This is a 2v4. You do not want to be on this for the side of Infinity Game, and they're trying to poke them out a little bit, but they don't find the engage. and. This is a thing when, you have a, when you're against a Callista. There's no 50-50 go for the smite steal. You have to engage. You have to kill off the Callista, and then it comes into a 50-50 smite steal. Yeah, but the big thing as well is Burnsy Irish has been playing a hell of a game, keeping this Callista alive and engaging for his team as no one else is particularly proactive. The Trundle Pillars are there, but generally it's going to be the Alistair who gets those headbutt pulverizers in, and he's been landing them so consistently, and... Good Karma has been struggling to stop him with Black Shield. Yeah, Good Karma needs to be a little bit faster, a little bit more trigger happy, I would say. We see now a little bit more of a push, and we still see one outer tower on that top lane still yet to go down on the side of Shed Life. And that's actually a big mom uh, kind of uh, map control objective as well. If you can get all three uh, outer, outer towers as quickly as... Um, Shed Life did, then you just open the map up for this split push pressure as we see I am Sultan just going and having a field day there against the wards and Kenny gonna be the, the, the person to clear up the top wave and I'm curious to see what do Infinity Gaming do because right now this this isn't working for them. They need to try and find someone who can either deal with a uh, trick guy in the bot lane, which at the moment is nobody, or they need to, f <coughs> excuse me, they need to find an engage and they need to find a quick, or they're just going to keep losing towers. Yeah, realistically though, it should be the Zed they sent, but here's the engage. Here we go, it's going to be unstoppable force to do the force into the Zonyas. Here comes the TP from Trick Guy. Bit late though, as Kenny wasn't even in the fight. He's still in the base. This is a 5v3. They can re engage onto this. Default goes on top of him. He gets dead marked. He goes down. They're now going to try to burn. He's popped the Unbreakable Will. Now he gets Fake Call out of the fight. Trick Guy trying to go back onto 7 Chamber. He does end up getting a lot more damage down. Hey, I am Kenny going against Dawson. He gets jumped on shot down there but trick guy is so big he may be able to clean up this entire fight himself he's going to be able to pick up four kills on the back side of that and that is going to be huge they end up trading four for three and that is a massive what looked like could have been a huge swing for infinity ends up being shed life taking more advantages and when you get the engage you're looking for and you exhaust the 80 carry who wasn't in the fight originally and managed to get him down that is your fight but what they were missing, of course, was before all these fights were occurred, they'd waited so long to find that engage that Trick Guy has just been farming up. He's sitting 313. He's sitting very comfortably on that Spirit Visage and the Titanic Hydra. And he has damage. He hasn't built that many tank stats. And you can see how quickly he shredded through what was left of their line after they wasted everything trying to get the rest of the team down. Uh, trick guy going with a bit more of a uh, a solo queue build, I'd like to say. It's a little bit selfish, takes a long time to get going, but when you get that Iceborne Gauntlet and the Titanic Hydra, you become a split push monster. And it's so, so difficult to deal with, especially as someone that Seven Chamber has picked up. Malphite doesn't have that great of a, you know, kind of a clear in terms of uh, minions, so it's going to find it very, very difficult and time consuming to deal with these minions that Trick Guy is going to be constantly pushing in his face. Well, the big thing as well is it costs a lot of mana for Malphite to clear the wave and to put them in a position to be pillared and subjugated, but they're going to engage on Trick Guy and Forces Flash. Yeah, Forces Flash away. That's a good move there from the side of Infinity Gaming. They know what they have to do now. They need to force those kind of engages. They know there's no teleport now on Trick Guy, so they need to try and keep forcing those kind of engages. We see now Burns the Irish going to jump in on top of Chica. I am Sultan as well. No one really there to follow up though, and this could be another fight. All five team, all five members of each team are here as I am Sultan jumps in. Doesn't quite find Kenny. 
This is so tense. One good engage onto Kenny, or one bad misstep there from the side of pretty much anybody on the side of Infinity Gaming, and this fight swings heavily in the other team's favor. I don't know why Shed Life are playing into Infinity's hands here, though. The win condition for Infinity is find one of those five-man engages. They don't have to do that. They can send that Trundle back into the split push, and at this point, Trundle's got almost enough armor that he can just start diving the Malphite. Almost, an, almost enough armor. Has a cloth armor. <laughs> oh, here we go, though. It's going to be the last bounce, though. But he doesn't quite bounce him in the right direction. I am still thinking a lot of pain, though. The Ren's going to come out as well. And Dune gets chunked out. Forced to use the uh, wild growth as well. Seven Chamber might look for the re-engage. They don't really have anything there. Actually using his ult defensively to get out of there. Trick guy so big. And here's the re-engage, though. Asika gets caught out there by the Fate's Call. And they're going to be able to take him out. Good karma. Almost certainly going to be the next one to fall as well. Default gonna jump in, but Kenny takes that one there with the Q. I am Sultan slingshotting out of there, and all of a sudden the tides have been turned, but that top lane is pushing very, very heavily in the side of Infinity. What do Shed Life do here? Did they just push for the inhibitor, or did they go to deal with that and take Baron? Almost certainly pushing for the inhibitor is a better call. At the, at the least, you take this tier 2, then turn for the Baron. The Zed is still up, but realistically his wave clear isn't excellent if he's not willing to put himself in a terrible position, which he shouldn't be. So, they're gonna send Kenny to the bot lane, though, get that tier 2, but realistically, if Infinity respond in time, Zed can just kill Callista. Yeah, Kenny gonna be able to take out the final tier 2 turret, but he's got himself very, very alone. As we see, I Am Sultan gets a nice slingshot as well. He's gonna force the fight, but Kenny, you are in no man's land, and everybody just jumps in. He's actually gonna be able to kite back quite a good bit, but he's slowed. He's gonna be able to touch out quite a bit. Oh, those Ren stacks are doing damage! But in the end, Wizard picking up the kill. A little bit greedy, but what can Infinity Gaming get off of this? They may get a dragon that will put them on three, but again, they're still a very long way away from that five dragon stack. They need to be careful of Baron being taken down because the Trundle is still going to be able to take this down as well. So Trick Guy is going to be able to do a lot for his team, and they're going to go for the dragon. They may look for the engage as well, but see what they want to go for. And Trundle's here as well, so this could be a fight. This could be a fight. The Cocoon lands onto I Am Sultan, and the Dragon's doing so much. They try to use the Let's Bounce. He ends up healing quite a bit, though, and he's still alive, but he will go down. Oh, the Slingshot! Not going to be able to save him. The Dune TP'd in from the side. I don't understand the logic here from the side of Infinity Gaming. Why go for that when you know you have a five-man advantage over four? Just bring everyone there. Just sho shove everyone there. There's no way you're going to lose that fight at a 5v4. They send three. It's ended into a 3v4. And they lose the dragon as well as two kills. Yeah, and it's just consistently better map movements from Shed Life. Not amazing map movements, but better map movements. <laughs> but we do see now, it looks like in uh, Shed Life are going to be going for that Baron. They have got Callista. There is no jungler on the side of Infinity Gaming. So this is going to be pretty much all but, uh, all but contested, I should say. As they go and take another one, the Ren stack should be pretty much... They, they say you should hit it about 1,200. I don't know if Kenny had enough time to get that many into there, but... Miss, miss rendered it, but in the end they do end up picking up the Baron. And with a Lulu and a Callista and the split pushing Trundle, they should be able to use this Baron very, very effectively. I always like the way the spears kind of give the Baron a main though as you jump around it. Nice quick little mane of spears, like lion's mane, it's pretty sweet. <laughs> gives gives the Baron a bit of style before he goes down. <laughs> yeah, and I mean the Blood Moon skin as well, it stands out a little more. It's pretty good. Yeah, we see Kenny. Finding good karma in the jungle. Nothing too crazy there going to happen there. This is the thing, though. What do Infinity Gaming go to look for here? If they can get a good Dark Binding, if they can get a... Ooh, I just talk about that now. They're trying to put down a lot of hay. Ooh, good karma, though. Forced to flash away. They really could have used that aggressively as well to get the uh, the ultimate off from, uh, from Morgana. It would have been a lot better for them. They're just going to slowly push up this mid lane while Trick Guy pushes down this bot lane. And honestly, this is exactly what they need to do. There's no pressure on them. They're nearly 10,000 gold ahead, just under, probably about 9.2k uh, ahead in gold. They've got seven kills up. They've got six towers to three, and they've got two dragons apiece, so they're doing just fine. I am Sultan really getting chunked out. Hasn't really got that much armor at the moment either. So they are just getting just getting mauled at the moment. And uh, Asterix J Gage as a 
third item, possibly even a second item. I didn't actually check for uh, Kenny, and that's a that's an interesting one. He knows he's getting bursted out, so that's a that's an interesting little adaptation for him. Yeah, and it, it was his third item there. He did build oh, around first. Kenny. That's Kenny got out, ah, and he's forced to use the QSS. But it is the a nice little item there to avoid getting burst out, and it works pretty well. And you see a lot of AD carries build it, especially when they're looking to that end. So they just get given that much more safety, especially in a comp that really does rely on the Callista's damage. Yeah, this bot lane though taking a beating, as you say, it didn't even need the Callista damage. QSS is down, so they may look for a little bit of a safer engage. I am Sultan looking like he wants to try and maybe angle for this. He need to kill that uh, that cannon minion as he does with an auto attack crit, but that top lane is pushing out in favor uh, towards, I should say, Infinity Gaming's base. That's going to be another point of contention. It doesn't look like they're really going to do the Dune, though. Might be forced to use his Zonyas. I was going to say use his, as we see now. Everything there, Wild Grove goes down. This could be it. Wizard get knocked back immediately, though, by Burns the Irish. There's a great ultimate there for Seven Chamber. They're trying to jump on everybody, but Chica just jumps immediately in the fight. There's no one going down. Now people are starting to die. Kenny is the second one to fall after uh, uh, after Malphite and Seven Chamber is the next one. Wizard, this Trundle is just too big, and he's just able to tear shreds into the side of Infinity Gaming. The turret went down as well. This is going to be the game-ending push, I would imagine. They've got Baron Buff Minion and Trick Guy is too big to deal with. This is going to be game pretty much going over. Yeah, you see Trick Guy, they just don't seem to have a response for it, and Burns the Irish as well with really good engages that haven't been able to be stopped. Yeah, they really, really are pushing it in now. That's going to be the first Nexus turret going down. The second one is not going to be too far behind it. And as those things fall down there, the Dune and Trick Guy just pulling down a little bit of dominance there. Second Nexus turret goes down. I am Sultan jumps in. The Wild Groats back up, though. Minion gets knocked back there by Burns. We all saw it. And that is going to be the Nexus going down in favor of Shed Life as they pick up their first win of the Division 1 qualifiers. GG well played to them. Yeah, and just slightly better map movements from Shed Life really gave them the game consistently and some slight misplays in the early game from Infinity when they had a lead and just ended up throwing it away from a little bit of greed for CS. Yeah, very, very, very strange game. And I wouldn't say clean either from the side of Shed Life. They definitely have a couple of issues to try and sort out and really, like the comp they had as well was such a huge power spike that they just really kind of tiptoed around, they really need to try and fix that out, but in the end they do pick up the wind, the wind, the win even, congratulations to Shed Life and commiserations to Infinity Gaming as they go 0-2 and they really need to start picking up a win if they are to try and get to the live semi-finals at G7 on the March 5th and 6th, but ladies and gentlemen that is all we have for you tonight, we are going to be going, uh, hopefully having another game very very soon they're a little bit sporadic when the teammates play, tell us when they are but we stream as much as we possibly can but from myself Ushing Blood Penguin Malloy and from Ty Celtic Tiger Brennan thank you so much for joining us tonight and we'll see you guys next time